Mr. Cooper's face held a frown, deep lines across his forehead, brows furrowed. He had only married Lorraine because he wanted her to live a better life. He never thought this would end up doing her harm. Did you investigate? Are you sure it was a normal death? Mr. Cooper raised his hand and covered Lorraine's body with a white sheet, his voice wavering a bit. Emily had just come back from outside. Because Lorraine's death was so sudden, and she had never had heart disease before, Emily went to investigate to be safe, but she did not find anything amiss at the prison. Lorraine's condition after entering the prison was very stable. No one picked on her and she had been allowed to live her life behind bars without complication. She loved her daily routine. It was said that due to her age, she remained relatively calm and got along well with a lot of the other inmates. This sudden incident scared many of her friends. They did not know what to do. We've already investigated it, and we've also seen the hospital's diagnosis report. We can basically conclude that it was a normal death. Emily just took a look at Lorraine and realized she had aged quite a bit while behind bars. You can handle the funeral. There is no need for it to be too complicated. Everything is simple. Mr. Cooper thought about it and asked again, Will Chloe know about this? Emily shook her head. After Lorraine came in, I sent people to follow her visit records every month. No strangers came. Right now, Chloe does not know where Lorraine is, or the woman's character. Even if she knew Lorraine was dead, she would remain hidden. All right, then everything will be simple. Mr. Cooper took another look and left silently. This sudden death did not bring any change to Emily's life, because Lorraine was no longer a member of the Cooper family. When Mr. Cooper woke up, Emily asked him to sign the divorce agreement. He surprised Emily telling her he had never legally married Lorraine. It was an odd moment. She had always thought her father had married Lorraine. It would seem he had only one love in his life, Emily's mother, who had died very young. Emily coughed and took the initiative to break the silence. I have already ordered people to keep an eye on the various entry points in New York City. As long as Chloe comes to the city, we will immediately be able to find her. Okay. Mr. Cooper nodded. Was the decision wrong? Had he inadvertently brought her to this end, bringing them in had given them a life they could only dream of. Was that a mistake? What if I did this? What if I brought this on her? How can I blame you? Emily softly comforted her father. There is no one to blame. Chloe made her choices and Lorraine made hers. She brought this one herself. You had nothing to do with it. Mr. Cooper sighed. I need you to spend some time looking for her. Chloe and Adrian will not be found in a day. I just know I will have no peace in the near future until we can find them both. Okay, I will put more resources behind finding them. Actually, even if Mr. Cooper had not said it, Emily had planned to increase her manpower and resources to carefully search for Chloe. Peter had been better in recent months. His good nature had returned, the gloominess gone. However, he was still indifferent, almost as if he was in a trance. He did not like to talk to anyone except Marilyn, Emily's friend from prison. The two of them had been in a complicated relationship for the past year. It was mainly because Peter's mother was too powerful. However, Peter's mother was different. In order to try to separate the two of them, she did not hesitate to hurt Peter. Much to Helen's chagrin, Peter and Marilyn were much stronger than she had imagined, especially Marilyn. Even though she was faced with a threat and her career was ruined, Marilyn stood her ground. Seeing the two of them sitting together in front of her again, Emily could not help but sigh. The two of you can't be separated? I just can't get away from it, can I? Don't you want to see me? Marilyn asked, a playful smile on her lips. She sat down next to Emily. Besides, Emily said, there's nothing to irritate you every day. Don't forget the last time we met, we didn't even know when it happened. Emily looked at her and smiled. You sit here with me. Aren't you afraid that your family is jealous? Peter glanced at the two of them. Do you need something for me? Yes. Marilyn nodded. Yes, 
Emily said. After all, this was just her intuition, but there was no evidence. She was afraid that Peter, who had become rational, would treat her like a lunatic if she asked she was about to. So she slowly took out two photos from her bag. One showed George, the other was Adrian. Look at the two of them. Do they look alike? Peter and Marilyn lowered their heads at the same time and raised their heads at the same time. Do they look alike? Are they related? They don't look like brothers to me either. Marilyn said hesitantly and carefully looked at the expression on Emily's face. Marilyn looked again. I don't see it. I mean, the lines of the face are similar, but somehow different. Do you think they look alike? Emily nodded. Peter and Marilyn lowered their heads once again, shaking their heads. Peter moved the photos to get a better look. Neither one of them could see it. Do you suspect that this man is Adrian now? Why do you doubt him so much? What evidence do you have? Peter asked directly. Emily shook her head. Yes, I suspect they are the same man, but there is no evidence. This man is George, the manager of a company I'm working with. He was appointed last year. Before this man came to this company, his personality was completely different from now. Around the time he changed, he had gone to Japan. I also told you last time the last trace of Adrian we found was in Japan. Emily finished and took a deep breath. Peter stared at the two photos again and frowned. Is that all? Is there any other evidence? Judging from these, it is a little difficult. I think it is a bit of a stretch. That's the answer. Emily was not surprised, she continued. I tried once before. Adrian was allergic to black pepper. Although George was fine after eating it the next day, he wore a turtleneck sweater, even though it was uncomfortably warm. According to him, it was a gift from his girlfriend. I just don't think he was telling the truth. I think he was wearing the sweater to cover up the hives from the allergic reaction. My intuition tells me that this person isn't as simple as he looks. After Emily finished speaking, she silently stirred the coffee in front of her. To be honest, before she came over, she did not think that Peter and Marilyn would accept her ideas. After all, even she herself felt it was barely acceptable. Sure enough, Peter said in a low voice, These suspicions are just that. Suspicions. There isn't enough here. Even if we hand them over to the police, they will not do anything. Emily lowered her head in disappointment. But since you are suspicious, Peter Becker said with a knowing light in his eye, I'm also suspicious. If he is really Adrian, then it must have taken him a lot of effort to achieve such a perfect identity shift. Of course, there are very few ways we can find out. How about this? Marilyn has a vacation coming up. We are going to Japan, and I'm going to meet his girlfriend. Send her information to me as soon as possible. I'll prepare in advance. Emily suddenly looked up. Her eyes were full of surprise. Really? Are you willing to help me investigate? Peter Becker said faintly. This is not just about you. Adrian is the murderer of my sister. I won't let go of any suspicious activity. But this man I know won't buckle with a face-to-face -face meeting. No, we'll have to get him to surface with other techniques. If I face him now, he will undoubtedly suspect something. He'll know we are suspicious of him and he will fold up shop and move on. Maybe to change his appearance again. Emily nodded. She knew Peter was right. It's all right. I'll keep an eye on this man and keep him busy with the bidding project with the Minder family. It will make it so he doesn't have time to suspect anything. I will keep investigating in New York City. Emily said, excitement in her eyes. After this matter was decided, it was temporarily put aside and they talked of other things. Peter Becker asked quietly, Where is Eric? How has he been lately? He hasn't recovered his memories, I'm guessing. Not yet. It's just that things are better than they were. I think he's regaining pieces of his memories or has suspicions, but nothing has fallen into place yet. Yes. If there's anything, contact me and let me know. Peter pointed to the seat beside him and hooked his fingers at Marilyn. Come here. Marilyn smiled helplessly but still sat down. I told you, he would be jealous if he sat beside me. Look, 
It has only been less than five minutes and he can't hold it in anymore. Emily laughed and ridiculed them both. This meal was very enjoyable. After Emily finished eating, she felt that her entire mood had been improved. Since Peter agreed to help, Emily believed they would finally be able to determine if George really was Adrian. No matter what the truth was, Peter would find the answer. What she needed to do now was to stabilize the situation in New York City. However, after seeing others display their affection, Emily could not help but feel a trace of loneliness as she walked on the path home. Actually, ever since Eric returned as Carter, she had rarely felt lonely. After all, she knew that the man she loved was still alive and breathing the same air as her. As long as she wanted to see him, she would be able to see him. She just needed something to jar loose the broken pieces of his mind so he could remember. As she walked, she wondered if she should send a text message to Carter. If she sent it, she was worried that Tori would accidentally see it. She knew it was better to be careful, but it slowly ate away at her heart. If she didn't send it, she would be miserable. There was a longing there in her heart. It kept urging her to reach out to him, to let Carter know she was thinking about him. Still thinking about it, Emily walked into her room and shut the door. Suddenly, somehow grabbed her hand and spun her around, taking her for a dance. She almost cried out before realizing who it was. They danced, moving as one, together in time. Slowly, she relaxed and melded with the moment. Joy filled her heart. Carter had come just when she was at her most desperate to hear from him. It was as if he could read his mind. The moon shone through the window, spilling white light across the floor. She could make out his handsome features as they continued to dance. Emily's heart immediately trembled. She could not even find an adjective to describe her current state. There was love and comfort everywhere. Why are you here? Aren't you afraid of being discovered? Emily asked softly. In the dark night, everything seemed so clear. His eyes sparkled in the moonlight, their bodies twisting and turning. I couldn't stop thinking about you. I made my way out when the guards weren't watching. They really aren't very good guards, are they? Emily chuckled as he grinned. He dipped her, the moonlight filling his face with white goodness. She bit her lip as he lifted her into a turn, both of them bathed in the light. How did you come in? Climbing to the window? Are you really not afraid that the security guards will arrest you? Emily reached out and tapped on the man's chest. I came in through the door this time. Or would you rather I go back to climbing through the window? Emily was amused, smiling and shaking her head. I don't care how you get in here, as long as you keep doing it. Window or door. It's your choice. He scooped her up into his arms as he twirled her again her body passing through the moonlight and then into shadow repeatedly. It was a wonderful sensation. Putting her down, they continued to dance, their bodies in synchronized motion. I love dancing with you, Emily said, her voice breathless, emotions running rampant. I love dancing with you too. Her hand in his, they danced and danced. She never wanted the evening to end. She could dance with him forever. When Emily woke up the next day and stretched as the morning sunshine poured through her window, Carter left at three in the morning. Before he left, they talked for hours. His words resonated with her and echoed in her dreams. She woke up with a smile. Realizing she was alone, Emily felt a little lonely. She walked to the family room and stopped short. Mr. Cooper had been waiting for a long time. When he saw that she was alone, he was a little surprised. Where is he? Has Carter not woken up yet? He's already gone. Emily was a little embarrassed and sat down in a chair opposite him. Are you sure it's wise to keep seeing him this way? Don't you think Tori will catch on eventually? Emily shrugged. She knew it was a possibility. It was just easier to not consider it and push it away from her thoughts. A chill settled over her heart, considering what would happen if she found out. She didn't want to talk about it. Her face was red, and she quickly went back to her room. She quickly found a turtleneck sweater and put it on. When she came down again, Mr. Cooper glanced at her and asked softly, The two of you, what are you preparing to do?
I saw a magazine that reported that he and Tori are going to be engaged next month. Why aren't you in a hurry at all? Why am I not in a hurry? Emily gradually recovered from her embarrassment and said, I am in a hurry, but choose not to let everyone know. You are hiding it from me now? Mr. Cooper was helpless, but he did not force the point. The two of them were going to Lorraine's funeral today. Emily bought the tombstone at a remote place on the west side of town. The location was not very close, but it was relatively quiet. They were the only ones to attend the funeral. Lorraine did not have any relatives, and Chloe was still missing. The funeral procession followed Mr. Cooper's instructions. Everything was simple. Emily stood in front of the tombstone and sighed deeply. Even if she did not like Lorraine, the death of someone she knew had brought more shock than she had imagined. Life was the most fragile thing. Accidents always came at the worst time. No one can control what their fate would be in the next second. Emily looked at the picture on the tombstone, and her eyes gradually darkened. She had held the tears at bay. On the way back, Mr. Cooper said in a low voice, Let's go to Nanshan Park. Emily was stunned, but did not say anything. She slowly drove the car to Nanshan Park, where her mother's grave was. Emily supported Mr. Cooper as they stood together in front of her mother's tombstone. Looking at the smiling face on the tombstone, Emily was lost in thought. Her mother was exquisite. Her heart felt heavy looking at the picture. When I brought Lorraine back, I was worried she would blame me, so I slept with her photo every night. I told her again and again that I did not forget her. Mr. Cooper rarely mentioned his beloved wife in front of Emily. Today, perhaps because he was touched by Lorraine's death, he started to talk more. My mother. Did she have a bad temper? Emily smiled. Mr. Cooper smiled and nodded his head. Legendary temper. You have the same temper as her. Do you agree? Are you saying I have a bad temper? Emily held Mr. Cooper's arm and chuckled. She knew that her father missed her mother. She saw her father had a smile on his face, but his eyes were brimming with tears. She thought they would spill down his cheeks at any moment. Emily changed the topic and asked softly, I have not heard you mention my mother's family for so many years. Are they all gone now? Her father had grown up in an orphanage and had no parents. That was why when he saw Lorraine and her daughter, he could not help but feel touched. He recalled his previous life and was soft-hearted enough to bring them back to him. When Mr. Cooper heard this, his expression quickly changed. He looked at Emily's face and did not know whether he should find an excuse to brush it off or tell the truth. In the end, his mind was quick to be honest. Your mother came from a scholarly family, and her father was very famous, and he doted on her the most and treated her as his successor. At that time, I was a poor kid who had nothing. The people in their family did not take a liking to me and asked your mother to marry another person. My mother wanted to marry you? Mr. Cooper nodded with a smile. She has the same stubborn streak as you. She knows what she wants. No one else can say anything to dissuade her. Her father wants to sever ties with her, so she decided to abandon everything and come here with me. Just because my mother doesn't want to marry someone she doesn't love, her family cut ties with her? So old-fashioned. Emily frowned. Yes, it's mainly because they didn't like me. My family background was not good, and I was a struggling businessman. Emily sighed and shrugged. She hadn't been aware of these things. Mr. Cooper smiled and rubbed his head. It was uncomfortable to be looked down upon, but your mother told me not to care about what others thought. No matter what they thought of me, I couldn't control it. I could only control how I reacted to it. Emily was stunned. She found that her father's gaze gradually became distant, as if he had returned to the past through recalling these moments with her. His eyes were full of deep love. What happened after that? Your business was so successful that my mother's family never thought of getting along? Emily asked tentatively. Mr. Cooper sighed and said softly, Back then, your mother followed me without hesitation. She was penniless, but she never complained once. Instead, she cleaned up the house every single time. My business gradually got better, and I was finally able to give her a better life. 
When the past was brought up again, Mr. Cooper could not help but feel a little emotional. Although your mother never said it, I could see that she still missed home. So when Cooper slowly recovered, I tried to contact your mother's family, but it didn't go well. I was afraid that your mother would be sad, so I never said anything to her about it. So when she passed away, did they not know? Or did they not come when they found out? Emily frowned and asked. Mr. Cooper's eyes suddenly changed, and there was even hatred in them. They did not come. At that time, your mother was already on the verge of death. I invited her family over, but no one would come. Emily, up until now, I still can't forget your mother's lonely and disappointed expression. She actually comforted me instead, saying it wasn't my fault her family wouldn't come over. She also told me I was the best part of her life and I had to take good care of you. At the end of his sentence, Mr. Cooper's voice sounded like he was about to cry. He looked at the picture on the tombstone without moving. Time seemed to travel back to when they had just met. Everything was so beautiful. Emily took a deep breath. If she met her mother's family, she would definitely tell them her mother died a happy woman, even without them making an appearance. In the afternoon, Emily accompanied Mr. Cooper back home. Lorraine's funeral ended right then and there. Actually, someone suggested expanding the coverage of Lorraine's death to media outlets in hopes of luring Chloe out into the open. But after thinking about it, Emily rejected the suggestion. Since Lorraine was already dead, Emily didn't want to use the funeral for something like that. Besides, Emily understood Chloe's character. She was a woman who could not swallow her anger any more than Adrian could. Chloe had suffered so many times before and would definitely come back for revenge in the future. Emily did not need to spend her life here. After finishing Lorraine's work, she quickly arrived at the last phase of the Minder family project. They were going to announce their plans at the meeting held by the Minder family in the afternoon. The management of the Minder family and the relevant staff would analyze the proposals and decide who would be able to obtain this project. In other words, the dust would finally settle today. Emily came to Cooper's early and asked their department head to explain the final plan again. She listened until the middle section, when she frowned. When the man who was presenting noticed her expression, he stopped and asked, Emily, is there a problem? Emily tilted her head as if she was thinking about something. After a while, she said in a quiet voice, It's okay, please continue talking. As she listened, she made a red mark in the middle of the document. Coopers had already prepared everything in advance. Emily did another final review and waited until one o'clock in the afternoon before arriving at the Minder family event. The glory, led by George, also arrived early in the morning. George, I didn't expect you guys to be more proactive than us. Don't tell me you guys came without lunch. Emily asked with a smile. She had to maintain her relationship with George. She was wary. Emily couldn't be too intimate nor too distant. She would have to maintain this kind of close relationship. George smiled, offering a soft chuckle. President Cooper, don't worry. We are all full after a big breakfast. Although the two families had established a partnership, Emily was still wary they would pull out or be scheming against them behind the scenes. Whoever won the bidding competition would have the benefit of partnering with other businesses in future cooperative ventures. After all, as long as they got this project, the headlines of all the economical magazines would pronounce them the winner. It would be a perfect opportunity to establish the image of the company and promote it. They would secure themselves in the business community of New York City and around the world. However, before the results were released this afternoon, they were still all competing with each other. Everyone was walking on eggshells until the announcement. I'm glad you had a nice breakfast. I'm excited for the announcement and look forward to us working together. Emily said, nodding. George smiled. As do we. I'm eager to see what plans we could come up with to expand our companies. Yes, yes, it will be wonderful to work together. This plan has been in the works for so long. I wasn't sure we'd see this day ever come. George chuckled. But now that it's here, I feel like a celebration will be in order in a matter of minutes. We can claim victory and begin our partnership. Both sides complimented each other very politely. Emily smiled faintly. 
At this moment, the door of the meeting room opened. Carter and Tori entered together. Several other people followed them closely. Emily's gaze almost instantly fell on Carter. Even though the people sitting in the meeting room were all the business elites of New York City, all eyes were on the Coopers, Minder family, and Glory. Everyone was eager to hear the announcement. Carter looked incredibly handsome, his suit accentuating his muscular form. He nodded to several people gathered in the room, including Emily. Tori glanced at Emily. She was originally just standing in front of Carter, but she suddenly stood beside him, grabbing his arm. She offered a smile as her hand moved up and down along Carter's arm. Emily saw through her intention with a glance and smiled politely. It looks like you two are having a good conversation. Are we early? Tori asked with a smile. The meeting wasn't scheduled to begin for 10 more minutes. Tori was just inserting herself into the conversation. We are hardly the most important people here, Tori. Obviously, you and Carter are the most important. It is your decision we all await. We have all been looking forward to this day. George spoke. His tone was very respectful. Emily only glanced at him indifferently and did not reply. Tori offered an appreciative smile, nodding in George's direction. She boldly held Carter's arm and said with a smile, I believe everyone already knows that Carter and I are about to be engaged. When the time comes, the invitations will definitely be delivered to everyone in time. Emily and George, you both must come. Oh, why? As I recall, you and I don't have a personal relationship. Why would I come? Emily raised her eyebrows. It was in stark contrast to George's attitude just now. Tori did not react at first, though Emily could see she was struggling to control her emotions. The lively atmosphere in the meeting room suddenly froze. Emily, I invited you with good intentions. What is with this attitude? Tori's face darkened, an edge in her voice. I have no idea whether Tori has good intentions or not. There are a lot of people gathered here today for the purposes of business. That is why we are here. I'm sure I'm not the only one who appreciates how wonderful your personal life is. But forgive me if I'm only interested in the business aspect of this gathering. After Tori finished speaking, she looked impatiently at the time. There are still five minutes until the meeting starts. Make preparations in advance. After Emily finished speaking, she did not care about Tori's stiff expression, nor her attitude. She returned to her seat. She deliberately walked between Tori and Carter. When she reached Carter's side, her hand was suddenly touched. Although it was only for a scant second, it made her reveal a faint smile. When she returned to her seat, Emily's expression remained focused. Tori coldly snorted. While others were not paying attention, her eyes viciously glared at Emily. George, who had taken all of this in, raised his eyebrows in amusement. Five minutes later, the meeting officially began. First of all, on behalf of the Minder family, I thank both companies for their support in this bidding. I thank both of you for persisting until now. Although the process was complicated and arduous, I believe that it will be worth it in the end. I feel it will bring great economic growth at historical levels. Tori stood up with a familiar, confident smile on her face. Next, please. Will the representative of Glory present first? George did not come forward. Instead, he asked their deputy chief to stand up and begin to talk about the plan. Emily listened very attentively. Even on the surface, she seemed to be even more attentive than Carter. While listening, she found there were a number of things hidden in George's proposal. It was very important, including the planning and development direction of the market over the next few years. The longer she listened, the more she felt something was wrong. She began to squint her eyes. This proposal seemed to be tailor-made for the Minder family, perfectly matching the development trend of Tory. Although Emily's plan was also for the Minder family, it was based on the cooperation between the two parties. In other words, the future direction of development must be for the Coopers and the Minder family to enjoy the same benefits. However, this brilliant plan was like a subsidiary of the Minder family, wholeheartedly contributing to the development of their business model. This did not fit George's character. Emily sized up the other party's expression without batting an eyelid. George was also very focused when he heard this. 
there was neither satisfaction nor dissatisfaction on his face. Her eyes moved to Carter. It seemed he was also having doubts about this project. When the presentation ended, Emily was the first to applaud. In terms of planning alone, it was impeccable and perfect. George's ability was indeed impressive. Everyone talked for a while and complimented each other. Then it was Cooper's turn. This plan was not made by Emily. She only provided a direction of reference for the project team to complete. But in the end, she was still very satisfied. However, from the standpoint of the Minder family, their preparations were naturally not as important as the bottom line. The spokesperson of the Coopers stood up and began to speak frankly. The process was very smooth, and Tori was not as troubled as she had imagined. She listened attentively. When Carter heard the middle part, he quickly raised his eyebrows and looked in Emily's direction. Immediately after, George also looked over. At the same time, Emily's expression changed drastically. When Cooper's spokesperson ended, Emily's stiff expression did not ease up. George quickly gave Tori a look, and the latter stood up with a smile. Thank you for your hard work. Both party speeches were very interesting. Please give us some time. We will announce the results as soon as possible. The people of the Minder family left first. George was about to say something when he saw Emily throw her pin down on the table. She pointed at the person who just presented for George and demanded, What was that? The speaker was shocked, but he quickly stood up, stammering. Emily's face was dark with anger. She did not smile at all, glaring at George. George silently watched all of this. If there were still some doubts in his heart, they just vanished into thin air. Emily, what's wrong? George asked. He put away the smile that could not help but appear in his eyes. Emily frowned and said in a harsh tone, What happened? Why are you acting dumb and asking me? Is this what your intention was all along? This is unfair to me, Emily. I just feel this attitude is unwarranted. George rubbed his nose. He looked innocent, but his eyes were full of malice. There was a tiny mistake in Cooper's project plan that didn't affect the overall situation but the insiders could see it at a glance. At this moment, facing George, Emily sighed heavily, revealing how tired she was. She pressed her hands on her forehead. We had to deal with the death in the family. It's been a complicated last few days. We've been dealing with that and with the added stress of this bidding project. I've not been myself lately. Emily clenched her teeth in frustration. George looked at her expression without moving. It seemed that he did not suspect anything. He immediately felt relieved and even comforted her. President Cooper, I am sorry for your loss. This kind of thing has to be difficult. Emily frowned and bit her lower lip. She looked up and glanced at George, as if she had realized what kind of occasion this was. She said in a soft voice, The project should have been glorious. Likely no one could have foreseen what happened. Emily revealed a self-deprecating smile and did not look at George any longer. She turned around and returned to her seat. The atmosphere in the Coopers was unusually solemn. George observed it all without batting an eyelid. He had suffered a loss in this aspect with the lackluster presentation. However, seeing Emily's genuine reaction, he knew it was not something she had done purposely. He slowly narrowed his eyes and went through the entire process from beginning to end. Finally, he was certain. She had just not done well enough on the presentation. She was being truthful. George secretly clenched his fists, almost unable to suppress his wild joy. Things were going as he had hoped. About two hours later, the people of the Minder family slowly came over. Although the main person in charge was Carter, every official announcement was made by Tori. Tori held a thick document in her hand and said with a smile, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Because both sides were so outstanding, it is hard for us to decide who is the winner. Here, please allow me to say that I have worked hard. As she said that, she slightly bowed to both George and Emily. After that, Tori raised the document in her hand and raised her voice. What I have in my hands is the contract for this project. Next, I will announce the company who has won the bid. Tori deliberately stopped and her gaze kept on both sides. Although this was no longer a matter of suspense, 
Emily still had to maintain a calm expression as she looked at Tori. She wanted to see if there was any unexpected possibility. However, the outcome was not unexpected. Glory officially obtained this project. The moment Tori announced it, the people in Glory immediately cheered and hugged each other tightly. In contrast to their expression of joy, the Coopers exuded disappointment. In the past year, they had rarely faced such a defeat. Almost all the projects they had prepared with all their might had succeeded. But this time, they had failed. Emily's expression said it all. She was saddened. However, because of the public situation, she held her emotions in check. She started to leave, but Tori stopped her. I wanted to say I was quite impressed with your presentation. However, Glory's was just a bit better on specific points. This isn't retribution. This is just business. Tori raised her eyebrows, her eyes full of ridicule. Emily raised her eyebrows. What does this have to do with ridicule? This time it wasn't me who lost. It was us who lost. Losing this project does not mean losing everything. We can start over again. I'm not like you, Tori. I can survive. Why are you like this? I'm not blind and neither is the business community. We all know what this loss will do to your company and your standing. Tori's words were filled with anger. Emily gave her a sidelong glance. You need not worry yourself over how the Coopers will fare after this loss. We'll be just fine. After she finished speaking, she gathered the rest of Cooper's staff in attendance and left. The others were still celebrating excitedly. Tori turned around and gave George a look. The two of them left one after the other. There was a small meeting room next to the conference room. Not long after Tori entered, George followed. She locked the door behind them. Did you find out anything? It did not seem like she would have made a mistake. Did she do it on purpose because she found out something? Tori's expression was serious. George looked at her indifferently. At first, I thought the same thing as you. But when I went to test her just now, I found that her expression did not look fake. She hid her embarrassment in front of me. And you know, Lorraine Wilson passed. Losing her stepmother likely distracted her from the project. Then the heavens are really helping us. Tori lowered her head and laughed. Tori had been worried Emily might suspect something was going on between herself and George. She was glad that wasn't the case. Tori couldn't believe the mistake they made during their presentation. She hadn't expected it to go that way. It made the decision to go with George and Glory easier. That's right. Now that Glory has been awarded this project according to the plan, when will Emily find out about the gift we sent out earlier? George cannot wait to witness Emily's failure and embarrassment. Tori said slowly, Don't worry. We have been planning this for so long. It will be wonderful when we finally publicize. Think about it. Glory defeated the Parker family and the Coopers, and in the end won this project. I've already bought the magazine. They will continue to report about Glory. It's time for Glory to become famous. Then they will stand in front of everyone in New York City. They will no longer be a third-rate company. She looked at George and said, you don't have to worry. When everything is done, glory will be yours, sooner than later. George raised his eyebrows. This was not the only thing he wanted. As soon as the matter of glory getting the project was settled, it dominated the headlines. The project had stretched for more than a month, and glory winning out over the major companies of the Coopers and the Parker family. Of course, the glorious image of the smaller company triumphing over the bigger businesses was a dominating theme. Everyone loves an underdog. Glory was a known commodity now and growing in popularity. George was not stupid. He took the opportunity to publicize his own corporate culture. After a series of moves, the stock price continued to rise. The Coopers suffered in the headlines. Again and again, stories talked about the ineptitude of the company and their inability to land the big project. During the process of being ridiculed, the losses incurred by the Coopers were unavoidable. Of course, they weren't the only company that had suffered damage. The Parker family was also there in the media posts. They were dragged out from time to time to be ridiculed too. Emily sat in her office and watched the news that had turned Glory into one of the top companies in the past few days. When Estelle knocked on the door and entered, she saw Emily with a relaxed expression on her face. 
and sighed helplessly. You still have the mood to laugh? Now that the outside is in chaos, just stabilizing the morale will take me a lot of time. Why aren't you worked up about this? The moment I cry, the morale will sink even lower. Emily smiled faintly. That's true, but can we really only watch them act recklessly now? It was not that Estelle did not read the comments and news online. It was precisely because she saw it she could not help but look for Emily. It was obvious who was behind this. However, the Minder family was not the beneficiary. Rather, it was Glory. It's not like they're going to act recklessly. Don't forget about it, we still have a contract with Glory. They haven't revealed their true purpose yet, and they don't dare play us so easily. These public opinion attacks are very easy to crack. Let them be arrogant for a while. Emily lazily stretched and did not panic in the slightest. What Estelle admired the most was her composure. If she was sitting in Emily's seat, she would probably have already started to plan by now. By the way, how is the investigation going? I want to know if there is any connection between the internal situation of Glory and the Minder family. Estelle sighed. I haven't found any connection yet, and no new information. Continue to investigate deeper. Emily became serious. Tori has a good idea. This is an extensive project. First, she will help the Minder family create a commotion and forcefully move into New York City. Then they will use this project to attack us and the Parker family. It was obvious what the Minder family wanted to do and what their goal was. They had already planned it out when they first arrived in New York City. In that case, the beneficiary was too important. Tori tried her best to get into the position of a third-rate company that had nothing to do with it. How is this possible? Estelle quickly nodded. Okay, I will check it from a deeper level. Of course we are going to do it. We are going to do it in a fit of rage. Emily smiled slyly. Since we have already started acting, then we need to be more comprehensive on the surface. Only by doing this can we not arouse suspicion. Estelle sighed. Tori really can't understand why she came to oppose you. Actually, in the end, they did not get this project. Everything was already within Emily's plan. Because when she heard the last time, she had already noticed that mistake, but did not mention it. From the beginning, Emily did not plan to take down this project. Because even if they did not make a mistake, the Minder family would have found other reasons to not be aware of the project. Since that was the case, Emily figured she might as well send a mistake to them. It would give them a little breathing room. Moreover, that day in the meeting room, Emily only called the person in charge out to scold them a few times and let him prepare to cry outside. The person in charge of the presentation was a man in his 30s. He forcefully flipped through the video of his wife giving birth again, and only then did he offer his tears. However, only a few people knew about this inside story. In George and Tori's eyes, the Coopers had only failed because of their mistakes. They had given up the project. This woman is much more ruthless than we thought. She is brilliant. If it was any other company, would they dare to come to treat the Parker family so poorly? She is meticulous. This plan is so bold that no one dares to think about it. It will be very easy to succeed. But this Tory had miscalculated one thing. She had miscalculated Carter's love and familiarity for Emily. She had also miscalculated Emily's trust in Carter, even if he had become a stranger who had lost his memory. That's right. Has the goods been tested? Emily remembered the serious matter and asked in a quiet voice with a sullen face. Estelle nodded. Yes, Emily. Sometimes I really have to respect your intuition. She silently sighed and quickly told her the results of the test. Emily's face immediately changed. I take back my compliment. Tori is even more ruthless than I imagined. Is she trying to kill us? Emily's expression was sinister. Estelle's expression was not much better. Yes, if we did not discover it in advance, we could have very well been killed. Emily, I think they are taking it easy on the Parker family. However, they are giving us the full treatment. I almost believe they really want us to die. Emily sneered. We won't die. You know we won't. We just have to weather the storm and then I will let her know who the one who really died is. After she finished speaking, 
she whispered instructions on how to deal with this matter. When Estelle heard Emily's words, she could not help but shiver. Once again, she secretly swore in her heart that no one dared to offend Emily. After a few days of taking turns to report, the image of the Coopers was greatly damaged. Emily's reaction seemed to have slowed down by half a beat. Only when the matter was about to burst did she officially step forward to settle this storm. So now when Emily and George sat together to discuss matters, although the scene seemed to be harmonious, it still felt somewhat stiff. George, you have become the most popular person in New York City. Congratulations! I'm sure you will capitalize on it to drive glory to new heights. Emily smiled politely. Not at all. George hurriedly waved his hand. Emily, you have been a popular person for so long. You will come out of this just fine. You have nothing to worry about. It's not the same. We have suffered considerable damage. Emily nodded slowly. After George heard it, he paused. His face immediately showed guilt. President Cooper, I am really sorry about this matter. After confirming our presentation, I immediately went abroad to deal with the follow-up matters of another project. I didn't know there was a problem until moments before the presentation. It was my fault. I hope it won't affect our cooperation because of this. You must be joking. You are the ones who landed this project. We are in a passive position. How can I do anything to affect our cooperation? Emily's tone was anything but kind. I apologize for my outburst. The bidding did not go well. I can't help but feel emotional over the fallout. Why don't you take care of the project, George? George waved his hand and said, Of course. Both sides got down to business. Although Glory had gotten the project, they did not make any excessive demands. Everything was basically as they had previously planned. After the meeting ended, Emily deliberately revealed an expression of surprise. She looked at George thoughtfully. We will still follow the original plan and work together. George reached out his hand with a smile. Emily also reached out her hand. That sounds good to me. Thank you, George. When George left, Emily immediately changed her expression. She went back to her office and sorted out the whole thing from beginning to end. She began to think deeply. By the time she came back to her senses, it was already past 7 o'clock in the evening. The sky was dark outside. Emily stretched lazily and stood up to look out the window. After sighing, she packed her things and left. Unexpectedly, just as she left the company building, she heard music from an unfamiliar car. Emily had a strong feeling that it was Carter. Emily quickened her steps and walked over. The door of the passenger seat opened. She got into the car and looked at Carter, unable to stop smiling. Carter shook his head. Weren't you worried it might be a bad person? Why aren't you scared? I had a feeling it was you. I was right. Emily's grin turned into a full smile, her chuckle spilling from her. They hadn't seen each other in almost a week. It seemed much longer. They hadn't even talked by phone, each of them taking special care to make sure they weren't spotted. They didn't want to make a mistake this late in the game. It made the longing almost unbearable, but she had managed. She was glad he was here now. She wondered how much longer she could do this. How much longer would they have to sneak around? Emily wished they could just put the car in gear and just leave everything behind. They both had enough money to do it. They could live away from all the chaos of their lives. I've missed you. Emily turned to face him. Missed you too. We still have to be careful though. How have you been? Were you able to find out anything? Carter asked, his eyes inviting his smile welcoming. We are still investigating. We have some strong suspicions, but not proof yet. Did Tori say anything? They were both hopeful the other had found something useful, something to end this charade. Emily looked into his eyes and listened. Nothing very useful. I think she feels pretty confident she won. She has everything she wanted. Not everything. She doesn't have you. Carter laughed. You're right, she doesn't have me. I belong to you. His heart shifted when he said it. He was lost in her eyes for a moment. Did you not hear my question? What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about how you can make people love you so much. Carter sighed. 
Although I am the key person in charge now, the team is loyal to Tori. I'm afraid they are rather tight-lipped at the moment. I've not been able to find out much. Emily nodded. Tori is definitely powerful, but she is not as smart as she thinks she is. She's left a trail. We're finding more and more of it every day. Once we have a few more pieces, we will reveal it all and bring her down. Are you worried she suspects you've regained some of your memories? Is that why she isn't trusting you completely? Not at all. She trusts me. In Tori's mind, I've accepted things as they are and accepted the psychological treatment. More importantly, I've accepted who I am and her part in my life. She definitely trusts me. I hope you're right. If she suspects anything, it will make it infinitely more difficult to pull off our plan. I know if it was me, I wouldn't let my guard down around you at all. Is that so? A playful smile darted across her lips. She knew Carter's competitive nature and Tori's desire to have him by her side. Those two things would cause a devastating blow to Tori when things were all said and done. I'm glad you're on my side, Emily said. I am too. I wouldn't want to go against you. Carter smiled and sighed again. He was doing more of that lately. I can't wait for this mess to be over. I can't wait to be together in public and not have to worry about prying eyes or what people are thinking as they watch us. I want to be free to hold hands and to kiss you in public. I want the same things. I should go. Emily looked down at her hands, but the two of them cannot bear to part. We're getting closer. It won't be long now. If we've made it this far, we have to see it through. She knew he was right. Her phone rang. She took it out and saw that it was Peter Becker. Half an hour later, Emily brought Carter to Marilyn's house. Peter and Marilyn looked worn out, their journey finally ending. The luggage was still in the middle of the living room. Both of their faces were full of fatigue. That wasn't all. Marilyn's face was injured. What's going on? Were you guys injured overseas? Emily quickly asked. Although the two of them had returned safely, who knew what had happened? Marilyn waved her hand. It's no big deal. It's just a minor wound. It will heal very quickly. Peter said nothing. Instead, he looked at Carter, raising his eyebrows, asking, You have not recovered your memory? Carter frowned. He wasn't sure she should admit to anything. He didn't know who these people were. After a moment, he realized Emily seemed quite trusting with them and slowly nodded. He even shook hands with the man. The last time we met, you complained to me all night long about being a heartless man in search of your calling. Do you remember that? Carter shook his head. I can't believe you've forgotten me. I'm your best friend. You need to hurry and get your memory back. Carter pursed his lips. I will do my best. Peter cannot help but laugh. Very childish, isn't it? It's the truth, though. I miss my friend. Even though we had two different personalities growing up, we got along quite well. I ran away from home when I was young. It was you who helped me to withstand the pressure from my family. Carter nodded appreciatively. He wished he would remember it all. So, we were good friends? The best. Unless you wanted to be enemies this time, it's up to you. Peter had a bemused expression on his face. Carter smiled. I don't think I want to be enemies with you. You grew up with Marilyn and Peter. You have a good relationship with them. Emily smiled and stood beside Carter. She grabbed his arm with one hand and rubbed it. After that, she looked at Peter and asked in a low voice, Did you find out anything when you went to Japan this time? Peter's expression changed. He straightened his back and said in a deep voice, Sit down so we can talk. Emily saw his expression and knew that he must have gained something useful this time. This time, Marilyn and I went to Japan because you gave me that woman's social media information, so we quickly found her. Marilyn pretended not to know her and went to ask for directions. This woman probably thought the two of us were just there for a vacation, so she relaxed and told Marilyn she doesn't have a boyfriend. Marilyn continued. She didn't say that at the beginning. This woman claimed to have a boyfriend at first, even said he was on business in New York. But Peter and I immediately felt there must be something more. Something felt off about her story. Later on, the two of us asked her out to drink. She probably drank too much. She eventually admitted she didn't have a boyfriend at all. Emily bit her lips. 
her expression tense. Then what about the injury on your face? How did that happen? It's a long story, Marilyn said. Peter and I were careless. We didn't notice the woman was being followed. Whoever it was, they tried to kill us. Fortunately, she continued, Peter found out about it in time, and we escaped without too much effort. In the end, they didn't suspect us. They too must have thought we were Taurus. Although this matter was said lightly by Marilyn, Emily knew that the process must have been very difficult to escape. Emily sighed and said, I'm so glad you two are okay. It was my negligence to not consider she would have been followed. I should have thought of it. I would never forgive myself if something had happened to you both. Let's not talk about this anymore. Look, I'm fine. Marilyn smiled and put her hands on Emily's wrists. Peter wanted to thank you. If it wasn't for you, we would never have thought that the two of us could be together. Carter frowned. So now we can basically confirm there is something wrong with George's identity. Otherwise, he would have fabricated a girlfriend. Besides, there are spies around the girlfriend. If this person is the Adrian you mentioned, then everything can be explained. He was meticulous. He knew that one day you might doubt him, so he arranged for a Japanese girlfriend in advance. After he finished speaking, the others present shuddered. If George was Adrian, then they had bigger problems. What was his plan? What was he going to do? When he appeared again, he had changed his face and pretended that nothing had happened. Emily thought of George's smiling face and felt her hair stand on end. Notify the police? Peter asked in a low voice. Emily shook her head. I'm afraid he has made preparations in advance for that too. Think about it. A wanted criminal like him can smoothly go to Japan and even have plastic surgery to change his identity, all without anyone finding out. He had to have help, too. Think about it. All of Adrian's money was frozen. Where did he get the money to do this? It was a good question. One that she didn't know the answer to. What do you think happened? Carter asked, looking at Emily. I think you weren't the only one Tori saved. I think she found Adrian there, too. I think she hatched this plan from the moment she found you two at the bottom of the cliff. She's cold-hearted and calculating. Emily waited a moment before continuing. Why else would Adrian go to Japan? He has no family there, no friends, no contacts. Why did the Minder family spend so much effort on creating the bidding project? And what of this company, Glory? How was it none of us had ever heard of it until now? Because they are colluding with each other. After Emily finished speaking, the atmosphere in the living room fell into silence. The four of them were lost in thought thinking through what Emily had just shared. If it was true, there could be big trouble coming. Emily and Carter looked at each other and nodded, both feeling what she'd said was true. So, this George cannot act rashly. What if Tori has already prepared in advance? She can find people to monitor the non-existent girlfriend in Japan. Inevitably, she will make other preparations overseas, too. Emily seemed to be calm as she spoke but her hands were already trembling. She hated Adrian. There could be no one in the world who hated Adrian more than her. However, there was fear in the depths of her hatred. Adrian was like a poisonous snake that would strike at anyone for any reason. She raised her head and saw Carter's worried look. Emily quietly took a breath. She knew now was not the time to be afraid. They still had a lot of work to do. She knew with Carter by her side they would succeed. Emily and Carter stayed at Marilyn's house until 3 o'clock in the morning before finally leaving. They had just found out the truth and now their minds were in a mess. Emily walked to the car absentmindedly. She had a lot on her mind. She knew they had a lot of work to do before their plan could succeed. When they got back to the car, Carter opened the door for her so she could get in. Closing the door, he went to his side and got in too. Why are you afraid? Any subtle expression on Emily's face could not hide from Carter's eyes. He had seen the fear in her eyes clearly. Emily sighed. I'm terrified that this plan won't work the way we want it to. I'm not saying we stop it. I'm just saying there are so many things that have to go right for us to be successful. Adrian has cost me six years of my life when I went to prison. 
He cost me my child, my innocence, and you. I still see him in my nightmares. Especially the scene of Eric falling, disappearing from her sight. Even though that person was sitting next to her now, he was still lost to her. He was making his way back through the wreckage of his mind, but he still wasn't fully hers. Not yet. She thought about what Adrian had said about her child. Was it true? Was her child fathered by a 60-year-old man? Could she believe what Adrian had said? Could she believe anything from this man? Emily took a deep breath and felt her vision turn dark. She had been hiding all this time, playing a game to keep reality at an arm's length. The reality that she did not dare to face was now laid bare in front of her because of Adrian's reappearance. How could she not be afraid of what else she would discover? Carter looked at the panic in her eyes and tried to comfort her. He knew Emily was anxious and afraid. Emily, look at me. Carter looked at her in the eyes and smiled. Her eyes blinked away the tears, offering a faltering smile. His expression and confidence calmed Emily. I know you are afraid, but I'm here. Although I have not recovered my memory, I am Eric. I know it in my heart. It will only be a matter of time before the memories come back. I won't let you get hurt again. Not by Tori and not by Adrian. I am here. Emily looked at the man in front of her in a daze. She said nothing, her fingers tracing the back of his hand. She wished for so many things in that moment, but realized she was losing sight of what was right in front of her. She had Eric's love. She had a future with him. While it wasn't what she wanted at the moment, the knowledge that he was back in her life was enough. There were no words that could describe the shock in her heart now. Even if this man had amnesia, the words he said were the same. He would not let her get hurt. He had indeed done it, because he had sacrificed himself on top of that cliff. Emily knew Eric Parker had sacrificed his own life and memories for her. Emily took a deep breath and tightly gripped the man's hands. That night, Emily stared at the ceiling, unable to sleep. Carter dozed next to her, his breathing regular and heavy. She was jealous he had found sleep. She hadn't been able to, and when the morning came, she felt tired and on edge. Emily drove Carter to John's school. She felt it was time to tell John the truth. She knew what was coming next with Tori, and George would likely take up much of her time, and she wouldn't be able to see John much. Emily also knew that although John did not say it, he was still thinking about his father in his heart. Half an hour later, Emily noticed John walking with his backpack on. He was walking slowly, coughing a few times. He didn't talk to any of the other students around him. His eyes focused on some point in the distance. He adjusted his backpack, coming to the intersection. John! Emily waved her hand with a smile. John looked up in surprise and looked around before seeing Emily. The moment he saw her, his expression changed entirely. Joy and surprise were etched on his face. He quickly ran toward Emily. Emily, I'm so happy to see you. Why are you here? He raced into her arms and gave her a big hug. Emily playfully ran her finger down the ridge of his nose. I have someone I want you to meet. She stepped aside so John could see Carter standing behind her. John instinctively wanted to rush over and hug Carter, but wavered. He looked between them both, unsure of what he should do. You said before that you are not my father. John pursed his lips and lowered his head. His voice was muffled. Carter raised his eyebrows. His intuition told him that he did not like children. However, when he saw the child in front of him, he could not lie about his fondness for the boy. Blood relations were incredibly strong. Carter half squatted and pressed against John's shoulder. I was wrong. Look at me, then look at yourself. Am I not your father? John looked up in surprise. Have you recovered your memory? Not yet, Carter said, shaking his head. Carter opened his arms and held the little guy in his arms. Although I haven't recovered my memory yet, it will happen eventually. I was wrong before. I'm sorry. He had been waiting for John's response. Strangely, the little guy did not speak or move. Although Carter was puzzled, he did not push the little guy away. 
Carter suddenly felt the moisture on his shoulder and realized John was crying as he nestled his head against Carter's chest. Carter took a deep breath and gently stroked John's back. He said in a low voice, Dad is back. John sniffled and pushed Carter away, revealing his red eyes and nose. However, he had already wiped away the tears on his face. My dad was never this gentle or kind. He would always tell me to stop crying. The little guy still sounded like he was crying, but he mimicked Eric Parker's tone. When he finished speaking, he made himself laugh. Carter touched his nose. Was I really that bad? Yes, John nodded. You are the worst father in the world. They smiled and laughed together.